Good afternoon. My name is Susan Dougal. I'm the Chief Academic Officer for Shelby County Public Schools. Today I am um, coming to you as parents and caretakers of our students uh, to talk about our non-traditional instruction, which you uh, hear us call NTI. As you know, starting August 26th, our students will return to school, but they will do that through NTI. So today I'm here to talk to you about what you can expect from our principals and teachers uh, in our schools and what we can expect from you as parents and caretakers of our students. So to begin with, um, one of the things that we talked about early on, one of the options uh, that you chose um, when we were preparing to come back to school in fall 2020, you had the choice of SCPS at school and SCPS at home. So I wanna start today to talk about the difference between at home and NTI. There are a lot of similarities in the two, but there are some differences that you need to know about. Many of you experienced NTI in the spring when we were out for an extended period of time due to COVID. And we will have some things that are similar to that, but this NTI for fall 2020 will be very different. So I'm gonna to start to, uh, to talk a little bit about that. So when we say NTI, that means that there has been a need for school closure, uh, either through because of weather or because of emergencies or now because of COVID. So going along with the governor's recommendation, our board and superintendent um, have decided we're going to start with NTI because of that closure. When that happens, all of our students are a part of NTI. You don't have a choice um, like you would in at home and at school. So currently all of our students will be participating through NTI and all of our teachers will be teaching in that same program. You heard some about at home. Some of you chose at home as an option, SCPS at home. So I wanna talk a little bit about that because when students return to school, uh, and when NTI is over, we will be using SCPS at school and SCPS at home. The differences are that is a choice. So those who are choosing to have SCPS at home made that choice early on and have confirmed that choice with their school. We ask for you to make that choice um, and to make an 18 week commitment so that our principals could plan accordingly with the space that we have available and the personnel we have available. The, um, the important thing about home, at home is that you know that the instruction happening at school is the same instruction that will be happening at home. Those teachers will plan together um, and they will make decisions about the next lessons and how to deliver those lessons uh, together as a group. And those teachers will be teachers from your child's school. When we think about NTI, what I want you to, to know, first of all, is that we have determined for NTI that our whole district will work within the same school hours. So our teachers will be working from 8 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. This helps our community in a couple of different ways. If you have to take your students or your children to daycare, you have time to get them to daycare before instruction may start. Um, it also helps you remember if you have an elementary, middle and high school student, you can have them working at the same time as well from eight to four. One of the problems um, in NTI that was noted on the school side was that teachers were available from early in the morning to late at night. And um, so we're trying to help our schools and our teachers to have some boundaries for that instruction so they um, can also take care of their own families in the evenings. Also saying that we know that many of you will be working during this time period. So we are creating 
time frames in the evenings for you to get specific help from teachers. You'll hear more about that uh, from your principals and teachers as we enter uh, this NTI period. Some of the things to think about is um, that your teachers are going to be presenting materials in different ways. They may um, ask your students to log on to Zoom or Microsoft Teams uh, or Google Meet or something like that. Also, they may be contacting them by speakerphone if you don't have internet access. There's many ways that, that we, there are many ways we can, can make, have interaction in learning. So just uh, remember that we're trying to think of all the different ways possible to interact uh, with your students, with your kids. We're going to talk a little bit more about some schedules. In a second, I'm going to show you some sample schedules. One of the things we don't want to do um, is have kids online all day long. That's not good for uh, brains. It's not good uh, for our physical uh, abilities as well. We need to get up and, and be moving and not be online for a full day. That's, that's true for adults and that's also true for students. So we will talk a little bit more about that. So let's look at some of those schedules. So the first schedule is what we call a synchronous schedule. Synchronous is like the word synchronize. That means everybody's doing the same thing at the same time. So if you look at this elementary schedule, Teachers may begin work around 8 o'clock, but they may not, may or may not have a, a, the first interaction with kids until 8.20, 8.30. It could be whatever time they decide um, after they start their work day. But you may start with a morning meeting where everybody is online together, or if they don't have internet access, for instance, it may be by phone on a speaker phone, so you have that first kickoff of the day, a morning meeting. And then you may go right into a mini lesson. And that mini lesson with the teacher may last about 20 minutes. And then as you notice on the chart, there may be um, an extended period of time then for work time. That means students will do whatever they're asked to do during the mini lesson at home. And um, the teacher then may confer, talk to, kids one-on-one -on -one through a platform. They may work with a small group, uh, or they just may let everyone do their independent work. Then at the end of that time period, you come back together for about 15 minutes and reflect on that lesson, see where all the, the, all the kids are on that. So as you go through the day, it's kind of an on-again, off-again kind of day. That's what the synchronous part means, that there are specific times of day when our students need to be available for the teachers. That's where the parent part comes in. Your responsibility as a parent is to make sure that you know that schedule, you can help the students log on when necessary, and if needed, do a little bit of uh, problem solving if there are any kind of technical issues. What you aren't responsible for um, are, is really the teaching and learning part. So in the spring, there was a lot of responsibility on you as a parent to be a parent and a teacher and possibly do your job and it was very overwhelming, we would like to alleviate some of that by, by letting you know that really your job is to reinforce, um, to have kids available, and let the teachers and leaders in the school, in the school district uh, do the teaching and learning part for you. So that being said, there may be times during that time when they're working at home where they're struggling with something. Um, they may get frustrated. And what you need to know, it's okay for you to say, hey, just hang on. We're going to get back online with your teacher in a second. We'll ask that question then. Um, so I think if you and your, and your kids come up with those norms early on, um, you will see less frustration when you know there are always opportunities to get back online with the teacher and ask the questions when, when needed. Now as we look at a middle and high school synchronous schedule, it looks very similar. Um, and I've highlighted uh, the times that they would be on the computer in that reddish color and the uh, home times more in the yellowish color. And you can see it kind of goes back and forth throughout the day as well. The difference there would be you might have different interactions. Each of those workshops may happen with a different teacher throughout the day, depending on your student's schedule. So you'll see a similar kind of schedule there. And again, remember, it will also be 
uh, from 8 to 4 when that schedule will be created uh, for that instruction. Now we're going to talk about an asynchronous schedule, which means that maybe not everyone is doing the same thing at the same time. So I've taken out a chunk of the day, and let's just uh, pretend that this schedule, it could be for elementary, middle, or high, and it, um, it shows what could happen. For instance, on Monday, there may be some instruction that happens for an extended period of time, and the teacher teaches a new concept, make some assignments, there's some class discussion, and it's more synchronous during that time. We're all going to get online at this time. But then there may be some task assigned that will happen uh, between Monday and Wednesday. So the students would have time on Tuesday to work on that or any time that they would like between Monday and Tuesday, uh, Wednesday when they come back together. Um, so that's more asynchronous because it's not a predetermined time. It gives um, your family some time, some choice, and also your students some, some choice. You may see that uh, both at the elementary, middle, and high. It may even be more prevalent at the high school uh, because of so many teachers. That our high school principals and teachers are working on schedules um, to help um, alleviate some of that overwhelming feeling of having to meet with six teachers every day in a synchronous kind of way. So you'll get more information about that um, from your principals. One of the things that you need to, to know about as well is um, how we are tracking attendance this year during this NTI period and then when we come back during the at-home period. Last year during NTI, uh, we were required to make contact with students each week just to make sure that they were moving along in their learning, that they were safe, that they were fed, all of those kinds of things. As we are preparing for the fall, um, Kentucky uh, Department of Education is requiring us to take attendance each day. So um, what we are calling that instead of attendance is participation during this NTI period. So the way that that's defined is the teacher has to have evidence that the student is engaged in learning. That could be through teleconferencing. So if I see your face, I see your name, I see you're logged in on Zoom, that counts as participation. If you are logged in in Lexia or Dreambox or Reading Plus that day, I see that. That counts as part of evidence of your participation. If maybe you do, don't have access to those teleconferencing platforms through a computer because of lack of Wi-Fi or reliable Wi-Fi, it may be through a phone conversation. Um, or it could even be through the learning management system. If you log in and submit some things through Google Classroom or through Empower or other ways that through a Google Doc, anything like that shows that you are participating and you will be marked in Infinite Campus as participating that day. If your child goes for a day or a class period at the Midland High School and there is no evidence of interaction at all, then they will not be marked for participation that day. So it would be like being absent from that class or possibly even tardy for a day. So you need to know that to be able to help reinforce and encourage your students that they're going to need to get up in the mornings just like they would for a regular day as if school starts at 8 o'clock and be ready to learn because they can't wait and log in later in the day if classes have already begun. So that is a big change from the spring um, when there was a little bit more flexibility in the time. So I uh, just want you to be aware of that. We will also be, um, through that participation and evidence of learning, uh, teachers will have to gather evidence of learning just like they do in a regular school year to provide scoring and grades for our students. So it's very important that they stay engaged through that as well. And you'll see some of the different ways um, that that evidence of learning will be collected through all of those virtual platforms. But sometimes if you don't have access, then there will be ways to, for drop up, off and pick up of materials at the school. And that will be communicated as well through each school. So what you see now is a, is a classroom at home. So one of my encouragements to you would be that you set up a designated space in your home uh, to be able 
um, that when kids get up in the morning, get their breakfast, get ready, that's the place they go to do their work. Oftentimes, if we are, are working from other places in the house, sometimes they're not quite as engaged, they may be too comfortable, but if we can put our minds um, into a place that's set up for learning, hopefully that will help in, in some of that learning in the home. Um, the other thing I want you to think about is what I'm asking teachers to do and, and what teachers also believe in is that we are giving plenty of time between classes, between workshops, between tasks for movement and brain breaks. So it's really important when your kids are not engaged in the learning that they are up and moving, either outside or in the house, finding ways um, uh, to move a little bit so they are not always sitting in front of a computer or waiting for the next Zoom call to begin. So that's another way that you can really help um, with, with our students in that way. The school supplies list are all um, online on our website and just want you to know that um, we've had several questions about do we need the school supplies at home, um, at school, and NTI. And we're saying yes, you do. So whichever school supply list that you would go by, elementary, middle, or high, for whichever school, you still need to have those supplies because our teachers are assuming that you have those when they assign tasks. And um, you'll need those again when we go back to at school and at home because whatever kids are doing at school, the at-home kids will need those as well. So I would suggest that you go ahead and have those supplies available. Another thing that we are doing that I wanted to make you aware of is we fully know that many of you uh, will be working during eight to, 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 from the eight o'clock to four o'clock time frame, And some of your kids will be attending some of the, our daycares in town. So I have um, been working with daycares across Shelby County to train their workers in how to do this same kind of support. So what I'm doing for you today, we're also meeting with daycares to do that. So far we have six daycares planned in the training, but uh, we are welcoming others. So if you have a daycare that you use that you would like to connect me with, just let us know and we would be glad to do that as well so that they could possibly support you while you're at work and while your student, your child is at daycare. So um, what we would like for you to, to understand and know is that um, the difference between NTI in the spring and NTI in the fall is that in the spring um, we already had processes for NTI but it was only supposed to last a day or two. And within 48 hours uh, we were asked for, to close school and move into NTI and our teachers and leaders and our community and you did a wonderful job uh, during that time period to be able to go from what we thought was going to be a couple of days to a couple of weeks then to a couple of months. Um, and so this summer we've been spending the summer getting ready for a more extended NTI period knowing that that was always a possibility either at the beginning or uh, during the school year. So we feel uh, very good about what we're planning for this fall. Um, and we have taken into consideration all of your feedback, your questions. Um, but what I want you all to know is that the teachers of Shelby County, the leaders of Shelby County will take that responsibility of the teaching and learning. If you, and as a partner, will take the responsibility to have kids ready to learn, um, encourage them and support them. And the key will be communication. Please feel free to communicate with me with our teachers and with our principals about what's working and what may not be working for you. Once again, thank you for partnering with us um, to, for a successful fall 2020.